This is case eight, a one-year-old with a renal mass. Low power examination shows a solid malignant appearing tumor. And you can tell that it's malignant, number one, by how cellular it is and the fact that it has what's called geographic necrosis. Essentially, you have highly cellular areas of the tumor that are closely juxtaposed to areas of necrosis. Closer examination reveals two populations. There's a predominant population of cells that have very pleomorphic nuclei, large nuclei, open chromatin, kind of a vesicular chromatin pattern, and appears these cells appear to have more cytoplasm imparting this pink background to them as well as a minor population of small blue cells here. So we, we do have a population of primitive cells. Most of the tumor has this appearance. So again, we have pleomorphic nuclei, a lot of variability to the nuclear size and shape. Most of the nuclei have this marginated, cleared out vesicular chromatin pattern. You have some small nucleoli. It's kind of hard to tell where the cytoplasm of one cell begins and the other, another cell ends. It's more of a jumbled mess of high-grade malignant appearing cells. And we do have some apoptosis in here. The tumor is mitotically active, consistent with a highly cellular tumor. The tumor does have this subpopulation of cells with a different nuclear morphology. So they're more carrot-shaped nuclei. The chromatin is more of a dark, even chromatin. It looks lo more like a more prototypical small blue cell or embrinal type neoplasm. And we have areas of necrosis, as we already noted. Now, remember for the more junior people that not everything that's pink and homogenous is necrosis. So you do want to go to a higher power and look for these ghost-like outlines of the tumor cells that you see here. This is very, ter uh, very characteristic of coagulative tumor necrosis. So what's the diagnosis? I think we can conclude that it is a high-grade, primitive, or poorly differentiated tumor. And based on the patient's age and the morphology of the tumor, the top of the differential diagnosis should be a rhabdoid tumor. So what do we need to do to document that this is a rhabdoid tumor? The answer is immunohistochemistry. Now in this particular tumor type, it's not a specific antigen that we're looking for that's specific for the tumor. In fact, it's loss of expression of a protein. So this is the control for what's called INI1. INI1 is a constitutively expressed protein that's found in normal cells. And in pediatric rhabdoid tumors, it's lost. So we're looking for absence of nuclear expression of INI1. So let's look at the tumor. So here is INI1 immunohistochemistry on the tumor. And at first you might think, well, they're scattered positive cells, so it's a positive stain, but it's not. Keep in mind that we said that normal cells constitutively express INI1, and those normal cells can be mixed in within your tumor. So these could be lymphocytes, they could be plasma cells, they may be endothelial cells, or any normal non-neoplastic element that may be entrapped within the tumor. But notice the large malignant appearing cells are negative. So this pins down the diagnosis. The diagnosis is rhabdoid tumor based on that INI1 being negative and the tumor morphology. So these are aggressive tumors of childhood. Rhabdoid, the rab part refers to skeletal muscle. The oid means like. So they're rhabdoid, meaning they often have a skeletal muscle-like appearance, which we didn't see in this case. And in fact, in many of the cases that I've seen, there is no good rhabdoid differentiation. But either way, if you do see rhabdoid cells, they are not true skeletal muscle differentiation. And you can show that by doing immunohistochemistry for skeletal muscle markers, including Desmond, MyoD1, Myogenin, etc. Most of the patients with rhabdoid tumors of the kidney are less than two years old. Essentially all are less than five. And the prognosis is poor with 80% dying within one year. They tend to be large, hemorrhagic, and necrotic. They tend to permeate and destroy the underlying kidney. So rhabdoid cells refer to a cell type that has abundant kind of globular appearing eosinophilic cytoplasm that pushes the nucleus off to one side but does not 
generally compress the nucleus. So here are some examples that have more of a characteristic, at least the one in the upper left and, and lower left, and I guess also here on the right, there are some rhabdoid-like cells. So based on that finding, of course, you want to include in your differential diagnosis a rhabdomyosarcoma, especially in a child, and especially if you see these large globular deposits. So immunohistochemistry, not only for INI1, but also for muscle markers. So rhabdoid tumors, and in, in, in general, in terms of the usual immunostains that we use, none of them are really all that useful in terms of being positive. EMA can be focally positive, and there's some others. But it's more of ruling out other things, so getting the Desmond, the MyoD1, the Myogenin for true skeletal muscle differentiation, showing that it's S100 negative, showing that it's cytokeratin negative, so it's not some form of sarcomatoid uh, epithelial neoplasm. I don't know how useful CD99 is, but they tend to be negative for CD99. You're evaluating a renal tumor in a one-year-old, and you are considering the diagnosis of a rhabdoid tumor. Your lab calls you and says they're too busy and they can only do one immunostain. What do you order and what result do you expect? Well, we already mentioned it's going to be INI1, the most important immunohistochemical marker for this tumor, and it should be negative. So INI1, negative in rhabdoid tumors of the kidney, and it represents a biallelic inactivation of a gene, which is the SMARC-B1, which is on chromosome 22Q11. This is a DNA binding protein that's involved in chromatin remodeling and regulation of transcription, which is why we said it's expressed in all normal cells. Again, you're looking for tumor cells that are negative, and you're generally going to have an internal positive control because of lymphocytes and plasma cells and, and uh, endothelial cells, etc. So INI1 is negative in rhabdoid tumors in the pediatric kidney. Name a brain tumor that is also INI1 negative. The answer? A typical teratoid rhabdoid tumor. These are rare, aggressive CNS tumors. Most of them occur in the cerebellum, but they can occur anywhere within the brain or spinal cord. Similar to the one we saw, they tend to have small blue cell elements, so they can mimic a medulloblastoma. But the distinction is important because these are much less responsive to therapy, and the prognosis is poor. So that's the end of the video for case 8.